Welcome everyone to what is potentially my most favorite video about Planet Zoo, period. In today's video we are going to talk really really in depth and detailed about the scenario mode in Planet Zoo. You will potentially be a little bit confused over here because there has not been really that much about the scenario mode uh, shown and talked about yet. So there are a few bits and pieces out there, uh, information wise, uh, that we know about this. But there is a lot more that we know because we know Frontier and their other games. However, um, I did collect for you uh, some of the info we have already from the E3, right from the interviews, right from the live gameplay and uh, from the explanation that the devs gave us. So this video will always be, at least I will try as much as I can to really give you evidence for what I'm talking about. There will be some guessing included. Um, for sure this will be, but I, I will always try to follow a certain uh, line of evidence so that I'm not going to guess into the blue. It will be all very very closely tied into what Frontier already did in the past or which is very likely to happen according to what they say. So this video will be structured in several pieces and some of them I may just say have been recorded in advance. So there is a bit of info in here which I couldn't know about in advance because there was just an interview released today and I've been working on this for a few days now so that the quality of it is kind of good for you guys. I really want to make this a quality video. So without further ado let's jump into the first part and this is giving you a small um, little piece of the E3 demo interview with the developer Lisa. So afterwards we meet each other again and talk about what she said. So we are seeing the um, Africa theme Africa here. Africa theme, yes. Will there be different themes in the future? There will be different themes. We'll be talking about them at a later date. I can't wait to show you guys the other ones that we've got in store because uh, there's some lovely things in there. Lovely. I'm really looking forward <laughs> to it. <laughs> um, and, and Planet Zoo is, is quite big on, um, you know, we're, we're authentic. Yeah. We're, we're not just a, a management game. We, we want to be, you know, true to real life zoos as well. Yeah. And something that plays a, a huge role um, there is conservation and preserving um, you know, natural habitats of animals yeah. and, and sort of educating the guests about that. Yeah. Um, how does that translate into Planet Zoo? So Planet Zoo is based off the modern zoo. So as you said, we want to make sure that we educate our guests about the animals that they've come here to see. So nowadays when you go to a zoo, you want to learn more about the animals that you're coming here to see. You want to know about their habitat, you want to know how they're doing. And one of the ways you can educate your guests is by using these Zoopedia screens. So these will be relevant to the animals in the habitat next to it. When you place them close to a habitat, uh, you can tell them to display information about one of the animals in the habitat. Amazing. And then this information will get better as you research more into the animal and thus your guests' education need, which is a new need that they come into the park with, will, you know, get filled up. Of course... Awesome. So we have two main things we have to talk about here. The first thing being actually just about the uh, different themes in the game and uh, she's talking about the African theme and she's already confirming that there is a whole bunch more coming. This is going to be very important after we've watched the next clip of a recent interview with one other dev of um, Planet Zoo who is actually talking a lot more in depth about the real development of the scenarios. Um, and so it's really important to think about that different themes also give you different challenges, which we're going to talk a lot more about in this video. But step by step, we have to really make sure that you follow the whole narration of it uh, step by step. So this is the first takeout. We have different themes that will follow actually a different storyline potentially and then also have different challenges to be done in the scenario mode. However, the second really important take out here is that we are talking about a modern zoo approach and I'm not getting tired of repeating this. A modern zoo approach means more than just building a zoo from scratch again always over and over. There's really a lot more to it. Uh, it could really be like building a zoo completely from scratch or it could be like even not taking care of a zoo at all and just do something else in like some of a quarantine area. But I don't want to talk too much about this quite yet because there's a lot more info going into it before we can actually talk about that, um, having built up some evidence. So let's now jump into the next interview part, which is with no one less than a Piers Jackson, who is the game director at Frontier Developments for Planet Zoo. So enjoy. So it's great. There's an awful lot to do in the zoo. There's a lot for you to manage and we think it's going to be deep and challenging for the player. 
One of our new features within Planet Zoo is our narrative campaign. Um, we, we have a series of missions. We, we initially use them to actually onboard the player to tutorialize them about the game. But then we, we take them on, the, on a fantastic globe trotting journey where we take you through a variety of different zoos. Some of them may be zoos that are failing in some way, they're a little bit broken. Some of them are you know, opportunities to create something completely from new. But there is a, there's a narrative and a story that will take you through this and, and, and give it a cohesion and it will bring the whole thing together and that's completely new to the Planet game. The narrative itself is delivered through a number of in-game cutscenes. We don't really want to take people away from the management so we have a, a number of characters that will actually instruct you what to do but at the same time they're doing that you're actually just getting on with things. We're not, we don't want to break you away and have very elaborate cutscenes. The narrative itself is more of a light layer just to give you an understanding of, of what, you, what you're trying to achieve in the game and just to take you through it step by step. So here you go. The most important takeout here is um, that we have a narration mode. And this is something I'm going to talk about quite a bit in this video, where I'm still saying that it's not kind of confirmed, but uh, very likely to happen because of reasons. And now it is confirmed, so please don't uh, hate me on saying it might be, because I know now it is done, but I, you know, there's no point in doing it again because I had taken some approaches on recording it, and they, they you know, the recordings are quite good, so that's fine. Um, however, there's a second bit I want to talk about, and this is what he said in a very minor sentence in between, but this is, he talked also about, for example, taking zoos that are somewhat broken and you need to fix them, or some other stuff that is not really related to a zoo, so that that's kind of, it, again, paying into what Lisa said said earlier that there are different themes following a certain storyline and also meaningful education wise stuff and this is very important to keep in in mind for what we are going to talk about later on when we're really going to talk about potential scenarios in Planet Zoo where I'm going a lot more into detail so now the first step we are going to take here is I I'm going to take you through the scenario editor of Planet coaster which is important for the reason that this shows you for once all the options that uh, the planet uh, franchise can give you already and it was the first installment in this kind of sense of uh, planet coaster in general and afterwards we are going to jump into jurassic world evolution very briefly before we go then on to planet zoo reason being is that we um, follow this narration because it's really kind of following the releases of Frontier and also making sure that you do understand. If you are not really too much interested into the details of the scenario mode, like really into the into the functions and different uh, items you can set, you may now want to skip to the next part, which is down below in the description. I have several parts now with the, with the um, timestamps. You can just skip on to me talking again about Planet Zoo. But if you really want to know what is possible in these games already and eventually will be possible in Planet Zoo as well, stick with me for the next two parts in this video. So enjoy now the part of Planet Coaster talking about the scenario mode uh, editor and then afterwards also about the storyline which is now confirmed by Pierce, uh, the storyline editor in the Ghostbusters DLC which was the first attempt in Planet uh, Coaster and then we talk about uh, Jurassic World Evolution which also with the DLC of Clattering um, implemented this kind of narration styled uh, scenario. All right, so as promised, guys, uh, I say that I want to make this video not only with me talking, but also giving you some evidence for the theories and uh, the guessing I do, which actually is not too much of guessing, but um, you will see why. So we are in Planet Coast, obviously, which is the closest um, we can get to Planet Zoo at the moment and um, Planet Coaster also got a scenario editor and the scenario editor has been patched in later actually not patched in it has been added in later and we are going to look at this one um, we are here and I chose this park because I've done this park um, actually a few years ago um, when when the scenario editor came out so basically this is as you can see a London suburb park and this London suburb park is uh, meant to be uh, for people to build a theme park in this is just what I've started at the very beginning and you were up to to fill up the other things and the other places over here. Just imagine this being a zoo 
and uh, your task is actually to to make this into somewhat of a realistic zoo and um, you would clearly have the the big problem here that there's like noise pollution and air pollution all that kind of stuff so the only thing what you could do maybe is an indoor park with smaller animals for example if you want to do this um, in, in somewhat of a realistic way but um, it, it could be like an interesting idea to have this smaller kind of thing and this is exactly what I wanted to tell you so maybe we'll also could be a thing that this park is maybe like a bad example for a zoo and you are about to get those animals that are living here out of here into a new environment which is a lot more suitable for them to make sure that this park then can become a normal park again without animals that are well you know you would have some swans and ducks and stuff in these lakes and ponds but that's pretty much about it um, that could be an idea but what I'm also here for is to show you what the editor looks like in planet coaster so you basically have this editor over here i don't know if we will get this thing in planet zoo as well because as i said it's just like you know uh, patched in or edit in later but as you can see there is like a whole bunch of stuff you can do in here and this is something i have done already and uh, this is like a finchley suburb a player created scenario you can basically again just change what you are writing over here all easy and these are things i have put in so first of all is employ four janitors and then there is like a sub sequence to it which is a um sub item you have to fulfill to be somewhat um successful obviously in in the first uh, step and you have to employ these four janitors with at least an 85 average stuff ha stuff happiness the vendors for example have also to have but this time only 80 percent stuff happiness you can actually just um change the difficulty over here if you say okay actually this is not too easy so i i want to have this difficulty to number two and then i'm increasing this to like a 90 percent which is crazy and we can also add another condition which then is a deadline for example and this means by we got year one march where the starting point is and you want to say you want to have this done by the end of this season in october given uh, it is halloween you can put in the 31st and say confirm so that's going to be easy as it goes and then you have like everything in here as well and um it's already added in here so where are my vendors gone by the way um all right they just went down because it's a medium target now so as you can see there is this new one with these uh, added uh sub sequences which are necessary to fulfill this one so a little bit of a different story is now what the ghostbusters dlc is doing but i'm going to show this to you in a in a second um because first of all we need to focus on that one uh because there's a whole bunch more of stuff in here you can do so it's pretty easy to have these things, these objectives um, need to be done and at the end of the day you need to fulfill all the things to make sure that the scenario is done, right? So, again, it's pretty simple, I can add a completely new objective, you can see there are a million ways of doing it and there is like, we can have the company value we have the park profits the park value the payoff of loans so you can start off like giving um the park a bad loan for example that they have to pay them all back like they have kind of a successful park but you still have a lot of debts and you need to pay them back and uh, this could also be like a very badly poor run zoo needs to get back into into the positives and uh, by doing this is maybe by selling some animals or something like that I, I don't know but there are like a lot of possibilities in here um, which don't necessarily make it a good game by the way uh, but we're going to talk about that more when I'm going to step into the Ghostbusters part of things so Total money is also again like it's kind of a deadline uh, if you have like 1 million euros as your cash flow done park is park is happy park is done um, you can see you have to build for example a firework display a guest count has to be reached the guest happiness average has to be reached you have a management thing which is assign xyz number of roasters you have to build xyz number of security cameras you have to catch pickpockets uh, you have to employ staff you have to uh, make sure that staff isn't leaving so treat them well you have to research items you have to staff building capacity being increased um, you have to make sure that the staff building uh, uses are somewhat set on balance because staff buildings can have different tiers so for example one staff building could be 
um, made for entertainment, the other one could be made for education. And um, given the fact that we have a better staff management in Planet Zoo, which is confirmed, and also staff pathing, um, you might want to make sure that the, for example, the staff building that is focused on education is always located in a good spot where you can send people in. Uh, in um, and not just uh, wait until um, they are trained by whatever, like, I don't know, a very happy coincidence or so, like in other games where you just need to wait for a certain amount of time. You really have to send them into a building and make sure that this building is really placed in a good position. Because, again, there is something that is really cool about the scenario editor. I'm really sorry that this hasn't been used too much in Planet Coaster, which is mainly because of bad timing, but anyways. Um, you can also have like theft victims, you don't have, you know, there is like pickpocketing in here. I guess this might make its way into uh, Planet Zoo as well, because we also have a security guard, so maybe that's the thing. But um, you can say you are not allowed to have more than 100 victims, and then, well, that's it. Uh, again, what I've just talked about, the train stuff thing, is basically when you want to make sure that all of your staff members are trained to a certain level. So if I click this, for example, uh, you can say what is the one you want to go for and you can say I want to have master and I want to have the security as a master which then would actually fit to um, what we just done before it would definitely fit to the cameras for example or the you know amount of uh, people that have been uh, had a pickpocket rub them so yeah that would be the thing and you can also add the condition and say well until a deadline or well, actually, it's just a deadline over here. Or just simply delete it, confirm it's in. Um, so, yeah, the only issue about this is, and this is where we're going next. Uh, first of all, let's just quickly go through all of them so you can have a look and uh, what we have else here. So, there's like a whole bunch of stuff with rating. Uh, now, the new shooting ride that has been in here is like uh, reach a high score, uh, reach ride scenery. And you can basically, 90% of it, you can just one by one translate that into Planet Zoo because it's basically just exchanging the words um, and that's that's about it but now one thing that was always a huge criticism of Planet Coaster was that this is only you know it's like a set kind of uh, set of targets to re reach and there's like no storyline in between there's like no drive there's like no motivation to do more than that like basically if you play the park and just start putting down a lot of things at the same time, you are basically checking all the boxes in no time. Like, for example, just look at these things. You're just, you know, you just build the park and you're just slapping in a whole lot of staff members and then just click every staff member and just click the training button all the time and you're good to go. They will eventually reach level. You don't really have to care about that. It's going to be working and, you know, as you can see, train 10 security guards to master. Well, at the beginning, that seems to be hard, but once you've got 10 in and you always click on the train button at a certain point of time, it's just waiting until it's done. The only kind of exciting thing here is like building a coaster with certain uh, attributes to it and also um, because given the, given the limited space available, this is like really a hard target to get, but this is like all about it. There's like no story behind that. There's not, there's not that idea behind that this is going to work out the way it is going to work out. You know, that's kind of the thing. Um, why would you do that, right? So there's like no storyline that drives you actually there. So for example, that the, if the park makes sure that all the different targets are in a specific order that you're going to cramp your park so that it's really filled in and then all of a sudden people come in like, you know what? Now, well, we need the coaster and you need to take a decision which kind of rides you're going to delete in order to put the coaster there and you have to make choices, right? This is basically non-existent in the editor how it is right now. So I'm assuming and I'm going to explain you now why I'm assuming that this is going to be different in Planet Zoo. Alright, so here we go and as promised you got some more uh, input now why I think it's a given that Planet Zoo will treat the whole thing a little bit differently. Well, and here's the voice of the future. Now, as it is confirmed by Pierce, uh, the next part is just cut out because this is me just giving a reason for why I think it's a story mode. Um, and since I confirmed this already, just jump into showing you actually how this works. You can see that if I go to my objectives, you can see it's called chapter two. And this is exactly what I was about to say. This is now story driven. That means you're building up on what you do. It's not like, here are all your targets for this park. Once you fulfill them all, you're set. That's fine. That's done. Park done, right? 
it takes away the motivation so quickly because you can get as creative as you want. Each and every park will somewhat be the same without a certain surprise. And the big trends, for example, of Rollercoaster Tycoon was that even though each park was its individual thing, you always had a motivation to go for it because there was a certain story after all the parks, you know, there was a given story why Dynamic Dunes was like Dynamic Dunes and all these kind of things, um, which was somewhat lacking from Planet Coaster, even though they tried to do it as well, but it, it somewhat wasn't working. So in the first chapter, I needed to do a whole of, uh, lot of stuff and research all the Ghostbusters things, while now, as we are in, you can see in the next chapter, um, it's exactly what we were talking about a bit earlier, this is why I made this. Ensure that there are no more than 40 theft victims in the park for two consecutive months. So as you can see, I'm having some trouble over here because we are at 32 out of, um, and it's like, yeah, uh, 0 0.8 months left, uh, 0. Point, no, so 0 0.22 of a month is left. So. That's kind of kind of weird here. So what I'm uh, wanting to do is now because I'm you know I'm I'm not playing this. Don't worry, but I'm just um, putting them in because there's something highlighted. Anyways, we are not going to do this here. I just for the sake of the video, want to show you something. So we are going to put in some security guards now. All right. So we fulfilled this chapter, and this is what I wanted to show you to talk further in the next part of this video. It's done. And you're now in a new stage. As you can see, I showed you we've been in chapter 2, and as you can see to the top left, already a bit blurred out in the re uh, left corner, it is now chapter number 3. And this is num stage 1 of chapter number 3. And this is very cool, because now as you continue, you are somewhat in a new block, and now you have a lot of new key info here. So first of all, ghosts are now active in the park. Ghostbuster stuff type now available. Interesting. Park capacity has decreased due to ghosts. Interesting. So, you know, you get a new framing. It, it, it's reframed. It's kind of a brainstorming technology in that kind of sense to, to get to a new result, which is actually going in here. Pretty interesting stuff. Um, guests are spooked. Lower fear tolerance, which um, is also interesting because that means my coasters that may have been interesting in the, in the first place for them are now too kind of crazy for them so they don't go on it. Interesting bit here. And guest happiness decreases faster and rises slower. So... Again, reframing. We have new conditions that we have to meet over here. My motivation naturally goes up now because I think, okay, shit, now it's not, you know, it's not like there are four more targets I have to fulfill and that's pretty easy. It's, you know, I need to deal with that stuff now and the game gives me some help now. All right, so as you can see, now I, I just click everything okay and I need to do some stuff. I just do it for the sake of showing it to you. We have this new thing available. I just showed you a few seconds before it wasn't available. Please shut up first. So put him in. Put him in. There we go. And I hit unpause the game. He's down. And now, as you can see, this objective of stage one, like one of those three is done. And now build two Ecto containment units and catch a container slimer. I am quickly doing this because this will be an important part of Plan Zoo. Trust me, it's gonna happen. Um, because they didn't do this without... I. Okay, just a disclaimer, I have no info if this is true, but it would be crazy if it wasn't. Because there are some new things in here, and this is... Um, if you go to the menu, which will be somewhat... We've seen that, we've analyzed this, right? So this will be pretty much the same in Plan Zoo as well. Hell, I can even change the color of the menu to make it fit to the uh, Planet Zoo one. Um, so if I go in here, you can see there is an Ecto Containment Unit, which I have to pack next to the path one. And I'm also putting the... Um, you, oh, this is a wall mount. Um, I think it's pretty much the same. So we can also use this one or this one. So it doesn't really matter, right? So if this is now wall mount... Um, okay, put it here. So this is done. Uh, catch and contain Slimer is the next thing. Maybe I have even put this to the completely wrong um, area because the thing is I don't even know where Slimer exactly is and um, well, maybe they have to go further because now I'm going to explain you what's happening with those things. It's, you know, even though it is really strictly related to Ghostbusters, I think for those of you who know Bo Ghostbusters, these things are the destination where they would put the caught ghost. Like if they if they are going out now to catch Slimer, they need to bring him somewhere. And this will be this unit over here. This mechanism can obviously be translated to a lot of things. For example, animal poo. Whoop! You know, where do you gonna go and 
put all the poo of your hippos. Well, there needs to be a space, right? Why not have like exhaust or like trash cans of a kind somewhere around that you need to put down strategically in order to make your uh, keepers put this stuff in there and make sure that they have enough capacity in their poover again to make sure that this goes in. That'd be awesome and I'm pretty sure that something like that, maybe not exactly this, but something like this will be in the game. As you can see, there is a whole new way of tackling the gameplay in Planet Coaster, so I think they have learned quite a bit from Planet, uh, from uh, Jurassic World Evolution, making this all a bit more story driven. They kind of explain something to you, they create a story, they make sure that there is continuous motivation in what you do before you actually stop doing it because it's getting repetitive in what kind of was also you know one of the main flaws of Jurassic World Evolution to be completely honest with you. So also they tried to get rid of it with the new DLC of Claire Deering and this is what we're going to talk about next. Alright, wonderful. So, here we are with the screenshot of Jurassic World Evolution. This is from the Claire Deering DLC and this is very easy to explain now because it is following exactly what I've shown you in Planet Coast. And again, this is exactly as we have been shown at the Frontier office. This is also why I'm, I'm structuring the video as I'm structuring it. So now it becomes a lot more uh, kind of uh, a bigger picture. You can see that this is all story driven because you can simply see down here mission hashtag three relocation 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 again you are told a story there's there's story behind first of all we needed to find out what all these animals um, issues were because all of these animals had some kind of disease but you didn't really know what kind of disease they had you needed to contain them you needed to build some enclosures which are purely for research here there's no enclosure that is um, made for uh, guests even though you can see some uh, viewing galleries these were made for the for the actual uh, researchers that they can actually research and just um, uh, observe all the animals and now in the third mission and this is the very next bit I'm going to talk about as the next evidence before we then go into the big park talking about what planet zoo will potentially contain and also this gives some kind of idea of what kind of animals we will maybe see in addition to those we already know and why some of the animals that some people think may not make its way into the game will potentially do make its way into the game because of the reasons I'm going to give you in a few minutes. So first of all, let's stick with this image for a bit more because I, I want to point out the mission that is actually happening over here. It's just one simple mission and there are like a few very interesting bits and pieces in here. So first of all, the mission is called Rescue and the, actually it's Relocation, but uh, you know, the description is Rescue tranquilize and transport eight dinosaurs off island. So just to give you an idea, there are more than eight species on this island and obviously also more than eight dinosaurs. The idea is that you are bringing those animals to a safe island. This island over here is having some real issues. The volcano is about to erupt and explode and the island is going to get kind of completely destroyed. So all the animals would be dying if you wouldn't rescue them. So, given the fact you need to make choices over here, it's again the third part of the story, you already made some choices over here, you already managed some issues, and now it's about time that there is the next step you need to take, and this is choosing which animals you want to secure from this island, which is a tough decision. You want to get every species with you, but you just can't, so you need to make the decision. And I can tell you, because I've played further already, then you will be on a new island. But it's still the same campaign, still the same mission, so to say. Um, these eight animals you're going to rescue over here will be available then at the beginning of this new park, actually. So then you will need to prepare this park for the arrival of those animals to make sure that you can contain them there and make sure that their circumstances to live are a whole lot better than what you can see on this island, which is about to erupt. So very important indeed. And um, this also shows that this game now has like kind of a combination because in previous steps of Jurassic World Evolution, also Planet Coaster, it was like as soon as the park is done, the park is done, the story stops. There's like no combination between two. If you have succeeded on Islam Muerta, for example, you've succeeded on Islam Muerta. There was like no freaking connection between this island and the next one. Like the decisions you took on the other island didn't really influence the new island. The only thing was that you kept your unlocks with you. 
that's it. You didn't really have like, uh, for example, uh, an amount of money, you, you know, you don't take your fortune with you or your depth, for example. There was uh, no connection in terms of animals that you have, for example, a certain amount of animals that have disease. Um, you have no kind of limitation in terms of, uh, um, uh, I don't know, uh, sanctions or whatnot. Uh, there's like no combination. It was just like in Planet Coaster. One park is done, move on to the next, start all over again without having actually a story behind that. Again, this is something they changed here. And now it's about to talk about Planet Zoo. Okay, so now if you skip through... Until now it's fine, maybe you're lacking some of the base info, but now it's going to be very, very important indeed. I have picked this screenshot, but in a, in a bit I'm going to rotate some footage that will kind of enforce what I'm to tell you. Uh, I have to tell you. So first of all, this is, and this is why we, we know about this from the studio visit, this is one of the early scenario parks in here. So the gameplay demo is from a scenario park, definitely. And I want to point out, first of all, I'm gonna put in a, a screenshot also of uh, the park we got at the very beginning uh, with all the screenshots, which is clearly a completely different approach on a park. Now with all the given info about the scenario editor of Planet Coaster and also with how the scenarios in the Ghostbusters DLC and in the Claire Deering DLC and Jurassic World Evolution are shaped, I think it's fair to say that this, the, the idea about Planet Zoo is also more story driven. And if we have a look especially to this layout of the park, I have also another screenshot for you guys uh, to look at. So this is this one. This is very interesting indeed, because this park doesn't seem to be like the screenshot I showed you a bit earlier um, from the original screenshots we get at the very beginning. It is not a central city zoo or someone, you know, like it's not a planned out zoo in the kind of sense that it is... Um, made for entertainment and making money. This seems to be more like a savanna area where maybe, and I'm guessing here, okay? I'm guessing, but I'm having a strong foundation here, I think at least, um, due to the fact that I've shown you all the bits and pieces from the other games that also the same development team made. I think this could be very well a scenario in which you need to make sure that these animals over here that may have some issues because this actually seems to be like a lagoon. So the layout of the park is not a classic zoo layout. It's it's not a planned out zoo. It looks a lot more like a savanna, like an, an existing area somewhere in Africa, where you were set out to make the best of this environment to kind of create. And this is now me guessing again. This could be like an education area where you are meant to be in and have some... For example, it could be that there are some ill animals that need to be cured in here. That could be one thing. Or maybe the animals have, for whatever reason, because there are some issues in that area, given that in Africa there are a lot of other things that are also troubling the continent. Uh, maybe you just secured the animals from uh, being endangered by rangers, uh, not by rangers, by hunters, you know? That they said, hell, you know what, because also this seems to be like in, in somewhat, uh, some kind of a canyon over here, as you can see, this is surrounded, maybe this is just a skybox, but to be honest, this could be like a canyon or so, um, where they say, hey, that's, that's a safe location, and, and we were able to get some animals in there and make sure that you secure them from the outer world because people want to hunt them down and these are all animals that are somewhat endangered if you will not all of them completely but a little bit like you know they have all um, the one thing in common hunters see some value in them right they the giraffes have some value in them because of the fur and stuff like that the alligators obviously we've seen in here have a lot of uh, a lot of value in them uh, for their scales and you know you know that there's a lot of uh, uh, fashion made out of uh, this obviously we don't even need to talk about elephants i guess with uh, the ivory uh, ivory and you know there's a lot of stuff going on even the wild beasts um have have some interesting bits about them and also chimpanzees are um, very often used for some secret research things that are not really nice uh, for the animals so this could be really something that they all have in common and you needed to secure them from the outer world given this 
this opens the door for what I'm wanting and now I'm skipping into the footage so you can see all the footage as a little bit of an eye candy and I'm going to talk about what I mean and what I really feel like this is the door opener for. So yes you have the classic zoo from the early screenshots, you have this zoo which is a completely different approach, could be saving the animals, could be like an enrichment project, could be like a breeding project it could even be like a research project and it just has to be somewhat uh, financial you know have to have some have financial uh, uh, things for it like you need money for it that's the way I wanted to, to, to put it and this is why you open it for guests so that guests can kind of uh, that they are giving the money that you will need to make the research and as they said and this is again the little bit of the video I showed you at the beginning as the door opener for this video it is given that they took a really deep dive into modern approaches on zoos and zoos not only happen to work in their given geographic locations many zoos are also active completely all over the world they are helping animals to survive also in the wildlife and this is where i'm trying to go now i think a lot of people didn't want to see dolphins and orcas for example in the game and for like 90 percent of all the given arguments, I do agree. I I am not a fan of having those animals in captivity. Absolutely freaking not. I'm not a fan of having those animals do tricks for, you know, the happiness of the guests. Absolutely not. But I am a fan of helping animals in general. And let me just tell you the story why this is me trying to emphasize that the game could go this way. It's not necessarily that they do it, but this could be a very nice addition to the scenario mode. So given the fact that this seems to be like an open wildlife area that you have turned into somewhat of a zoo, and given the thing that the early stages of the Claire Deering DLC were completely without guests, it was completely focused on treating animals well, it could well, very well be that you are given, for example, a lagoon, like let's say an, I don't know, Canadian lagoon or maybe I Iceland or so, or Caribbean, I don't know where you do have some aquatic animals in that you need to care for because we know that our oceans are being filled with a whole lot of plastic that doesn't belong there and um, for the most part it is really hard to make sure that all the plastic goes out of the oceans quickly enough to make sure that these animals are not hurt by it. Obviously it's not only only dolphins and orcas getting hurt by it, also a lot of other species obviously but my main point is, this could be an approach that is really not against the hate out there that they, people don't want to see that animal in a game to put it in an enclosure. If the game really emphasizes the idea of having them still in the wildlife and still taking care of them. Like, given the fact you are in a lagoon, this lagoon has been completely um, polluted by the environmental things and you were able to kind of... Um, make sure that all these bad people in this region vanished because you have a lot of money from your zoo that have you been running beforehand so you made sure that you have some connections to the government and that you got handed over this lagoon in terms of changing this lagoon into a flourishing um or organism and and uh, let's say uh, that's an ecosystem again and so that means you have to uh, for example build a really great uh, purifier system that makes sure that the whole lagoon is getting clear again and you have to cure the animals like you have to, for example let's give them there is a school of dolphins in there they don't want to breed because they you know they have some issues with health and you are there to help them getting back to health and make sure that they start breeding again so the objective of this scenario coming back really to the heart fact of doing scenarios could be that you have the lagoon that there is um, a given amount of money obviously the only way you can make money is showing success for example so that you give you can get other governmental resources for example so you need to really think about what you do build and what you don't and what you can do and what you don't do and uh, maybe you can even get some for example choices again making choices you potentially could get requests from actual zoos that would buy an animal from you for a lot of money and then it's getting really interesting here because if you decline you may not be able to go on with the whole project and you would sacrifice the life of all the animals in the lagoon or you need to take that decision to sell one but you could then secure the rest given yet 10 animals there and secure nine of them and make sure that the rest of the family can or like 
maybe different schools breed animals again and breed babies again so at the end you sacrificed one life for making sure that the rest of the life i don't I, I don't think that the game will go that way to be honest but you know what i'm trying to go for it's really a possibility that the game does do this kind of thing and then Having these scenarios with, again, set the targets to make sure that all the animals are cured, make sure that you have enough money left to make sure that you build a nice lagoon, make sure that the water is uh, fine again and healthy, make sure that you don't destroy the lagoon, make sure whatever, blah, 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 and at the end the main target is make sure that they breed two more babies. Full stop. How cool would that be to get then the unlock to have, like, the dolphins in the game? And if there would not be a given zoo that has the dolphins in, and maybe they wouldn't include shows, for example, it's up to you if you want to put them into your zoo in a, in a closed captivity-ish environment, and that would not be Frontier's mistake then, right? So this could be a way of approaching it, and I would say I would love it. I would totally love this way. At the end of the day, it's really a game, but the game then would actually emphasize a very good thing about what zoos nowadays do and i think since i'm talking quite a bit here um i i want to i want to keep it fairly short in terms of you know as short as i can and can keep it because it's really a, a topic that i think is super necessary to talk about it but also super interesting at the same time so yeah as i said the scenario mode in planet zoo will definitely be a huge step ahead of what we've seen in jurassic world evolution based game and planet coaster based game I think this is a given. It must be it must be super crazy if if it wouldn't. Like for all the things, for all the reasons I've I've shown you, they have learned. And uh, let alone this scenario as this or like the video as it's sh showing you how this whole park is layouted. It's definitely a more natural approach. And we have already seen the natural like more old English style city zoo approach. So two very different ones already in here. In the little video clip I showed you at the beginning, you can hear that Lisa says there's a whole lot more to show you and that's by far not what they are stopping at. That what Bo said is hinting at really what they want to do. They want to emphasize the modern approach of zoos. And as we have been so lucky to talk to a zoo manager in uh, Burgess recently, we know how much they do to improve the lives of animals in general, not only... Um, not only for uh, their animals in a zoo, because actually what they're doing, just a little bit as a side info here, because I found this super interesting, they do have like a live library, which they share with a lot of other zoos they do trust, um, which is somewhat like a Pokedex, if you will. Um, everything they do research about their animals of a certain species goes into this dictionary live. That means every other zoo that is registered in the same dictionary i should call it or like library can see these research results in real time that means let's say in burgess zoo in uh, the netherlands there is a giraffe having some issues that have been unknown before and they were able to cure it and um, then they put all that info in this library and then let's say two days later uh, and, and, well, just as an additional info, it took them a week to find out what the giraffe had and all these issues and then I found out what to do. And then two weeks later, a zoo in, uh, let's say, the United States, um, even though they have a different approach on zoos generally, let's say in Ireland, right? A zoo in Ireland um, has the same problem with the giraffe and normally they wouldn't know what to do. And then they would need to call all the different zoos and ask, hey, had you, did you have the same issue? Maybe you, can you help us? No, they just have to look into this library and then can really see, oh, see there, the, the zoo in Anaheim and, and the Netherlands, uh, they had this like last week and they cured it this way. So let's just call if it is suitable and then boom, there you go, right? This could also be like, again, this could be simply a scenario, fill in the dictionary, for these kind of animals here because we don't know enough about these animals to make sure that we can um, maintain a good way of uh, you know whole, having them in our zoos to make sure that their lives is the best way it can be so many many possibilities all basing in things that we can say are somewhat approved already by the stuff we've been seeing so yeah i can only say i'm the first time ever for a Frontier game, super curious for the scenario mode because both the um, Ghostbusters one and the uh, Claire Deering DLC one 
gave me a lot more to play and gave me a lot more motivation to play it um, than the original ones, which is a step ahead, obviously. And also I find that this is a huge chance for the whole genre to make a step forward into storytelling elements, because I mean, it in some way looks already like a blockbuster. Why not tell it as a blockbuster, right? So I think that's kind of a good way to end this video today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found this interesting and um, talking about the scenarios, how they could be shaped and stuff. If you did, make sure to share it because I really want to have the community together and talk about it. I want to create a discussion how you would like to see the scenarios of Planet Zoo be laid out, be shaped, be like kind of made so that these are interesting for you. Do you maybe like just the approach of having like a, a park and, and 10 targets and just be left alone with it because you don't care about stories? I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below if you think it's worth sharing. Make sure to send it to your friends that are also interested in Zeus and make sure they join the discussion because I really want to see what you guys are talking about and I'm happy to join you. So yeah, hopefully to see you back in the comment section down below. And also if you liked it, give it a like and then if you want to see more content of this kind in the future, also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. And I think that's all I can say about this video. Guys, have a good time and see you next time. Bye-bye.